Hi everyone, welcome back to Kadev Tips. In this tutorial, I'll guide you step by step through the process of storing images in a SQL database and then retrieving and displaying them in your C Sharp application. Let me show you an example. I will browse for an image that I want to save in database. I will choose this one, the orange. Enter a name. Then click the save button. It is now saved in the database and automatically loaded into the data grid view. If I double click the records in the data grid view, it will load its image. Let's add one more. Click the browse button again. I will choose this one, the apple. Enter a name. Then click the save button. Let's try clicking the records in the data grid view again. It's working. Now, I will show you how it works. Make sure to finish watching this video until the end so you won't miss anything. But before we start, welcome to Kadev Tips, your ultimate destination for programming tutorials and all things code related. If you're passionate about learning to code or improving your programming skills, you're in the right place. But before we dive into today's programming tutorial, I'd like to invite you to become a part of our growing community. If you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button below. By subscribing, you'll gain access to a wealth of programming knowledge and stay updated with the latest tutorials we release. So, go ahead and subscribe now, and let's get coding. First, create a design for your program. You can use my design as a reference depending on your preference. Now, let's add code to the browse button. At the top, add using directives, using system.io and using system.data.sql client. Go back to the browse button's load event and write the following code. I already have the code ready here, so you can just pause the video to copy it. Basically, the purpose of this code is to open the file dialog and display all images on your PC. This code will retrieve the path location of the image you selected, and display the image in the picture box. After you've written the code for the browse button, return to the design view and run the program. Click the browse button. Choose an image you want to load. Then click open, or double click on it. As you can see, we have retrieved the path location of your chosen image, and loaded the image into the picture box. The next thing I will teach you is how to save an image in the database. Let's first create our database. I am using an MS SQL Server database, but it will work with any database you are using. As you can see, here's my script for creating a table. I will create a table named images with three columns, ID, name, and image. Note. Make sure that the data type of your image column is var binary. I think in other databases, it might not be called var binary. Just look for the equivalent data type of var binary in your database. I will run the script. Now we have successfully created our database table. Just double check on it. Select data from images table. As you can see, our table has already been created, but there are no records yet. Let's return to our program now. We will add code to the save button. Double click on it. At the top again, create a variable and declare your database connection string in this format. Make sure that your server name, database name, username and password are correct. After setting up your database connection string, Go to the bottom and add new method named, insert image, with string parameter. Inside the insert image method, write the following code. I have the code ready again, so you can pause the video to copy it. The purpose of this code is to insert our selected image into the database. This is the method we will call later with our save button. Once done, go back to the save button's load event and write this code, to call the insert image method. Go back to our design view now, and let's run the program. Click the browse button. Choose an image, double click on it. Add a name, then click the save button. 
it is said that the image we selected has been saved in the database. Let's confirm it. Go back to the database to check if it has indeed been saved. Run the select script again. Yes, it is there. Our image has been successfully saved in our database. Let's try to insert one more image. Run the select script again. As you can see, we successfully inserted the second image into the database. Now, go back to our program. The next thing I will show is how to display our records from the database in our data grid view. Let's stop the program first. Then go to the form load event. Double click the form. At the bottom, create a new method called load data. Inside the load event of the new load data method, write the following code. I have the code ready here again, so just pause the video to copy it. The purpose of this code is to connect our system to the database and load the data into the data grid view. Once done, call the load data method in the form load event. This way, every time we run the system, our data from database will automatically load into the data grid view. Also, Call the load data method in the save button click event, below the insert image method. This ensures that when we insert an image into the database, the newly added record will automatically be loaded into the data grid view. Let's run the program again. As you can see, once we run the program, the records from our database are automatically loaded in the data grid view. Let's insert a new image into the database. Click the browse button, choose a new image, Add a name, then click the save button. It's working. Once we save a new image in the database, it immediately loads in our data grid view. And next, I will show you how to retrieve an image from the database and load it into a picture box. For example, when I click a record in the data grid view, the image stored in that record will be displayed in the picture box. Okay, let's begin. Click on the data grid view and go to its properties. In the properties window, click on the events icon, which looks like a lightning bolt. Find the event, cell begin edit. Double click on the right side, then write this code. This code will not allow you to edit the records directly in the data grid view. Go back to the design view, click on the data grid view again, and go to the events properties. Now look for cell double click, then double click on it. At the bottom, create a new method named load image with an integer parameter called image ID. Write the following code inside the load image method. This is the method we will call to load the image into the picture box based on what we click in the data grid view. Just pause the video again so you can copy the code. Once done, Go back to the cell double click event of the data grid view and write this code. First line, declare an integer variable named image ID. Second line, set the value of image ID to the ID of the record selected in the data grid view. Finally, call the load image method and pass the image ID variable as a parameter. After completing that, let's run the program again. Click the browse button and select another image to save in the database. Enter a name and click the save button. Now, double click any record in the data grid view. Yes, it works. We have successfully loaded the image into the picture box based on the record we clicked in the data grid view. Let's try adding one more image. Double click on it. Yes, it really works. Now, we're done. If you found this video helpful and informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more useful tutorials like this. Your support means a lot and helps me create more content for you. Click the like button and hit subscribe. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.